And I'm just waiting for that red dot to appear and then I know we're starting. OK, so uh, right, so welcome. Um, and as I say, this will not be recorded. I thought uh, we'd start for we are finished last time where I just had a mind blank. Um, Welcome to have your mic on if you want to have. But otherwise switch the off um, just to stop any noise. Oh. Um. OK, so let's have a look now. Uh, just checking. Can you all hear me? Yes, no. You can hear me. Right, I'm just going to go and do the I'll write the chat. Yes. Sorry, my computer is very slow this morning. OK, let's um, now do this. So in the lab part of the experiment, you are going to be coming in and doing a dilution first. So you're going to be taking um, one milliliter of your, and this is supposed, to, it's actually vinegar in the assessment. So this is going to be actually uh, HCL uh, for our example that we're doing. Um, so you're going to be taking one milliliter of that HCL and then adding an indicator and then you're going to be adding dropwise your sodium hydroxide and swirling it in the beaker until there's a color change. And then you find it's approximately, I mean, it'll depend on which lab you're in and when you're doing it. So I'm just saying we got 8.2 milliliters. Now that's approximately, it's quite close to 10. Um, we could, so it's a ratio of sort of one is to eight, uh, but it's close enough to one is to 10. So we could use a 20 mil pipette, that's still okay, or we could use a 25. So either of those would have been done um, marked correct, but actually in the lab, you you know, you are given 25 mil pipettes. You do not have to do the dilution, your, um, you know, actually make up the solution yourself. It would already be done for you. But <clears throat> we just take easy figures. So we say that's close enough as to one is to 10. So one mil of acid is going to be about to 10 milliliters of base. So the dilution is 10 times. So hopefully you're all with me so far. Um, we've just rounded that eight up to 10 because that's a nice easy um, figure. And so we can you choose to make it uh, 10 times. Remember our volumetric flask is 250. Okay, um, so that's a 250 mil volumetric flask because that's the only one you're given. So to dilute it 10 times, if you're given these choices of pipettes, you would choose this pipette. So it's um, 25 mil per pet. Remember those zeros, they are important. Uh, and that should actually also be there. And it means I've diluted it 10 times. So we keep it nice and simple. Now for excellence, and this is just, we had an absolute brain freeze uh, last time, was you do need to uh, calculate that if you've diluted the solution 10 times, what would be my approximate titer value? In other words, in my burette, would I expect to use about 10 milliliters of base or 15 milliliters or 20 milliliters, or what would I need approximately to use? So you would calculate this, and it's good to get into your head. Um, have I diluted the acid more than necessary? So if I go back here, I only needed 8.2 milliliters of the base. Uh, so I only really need to dilute the acid 8.2 times, but I'm diluting it 
10 times. So is my acid now, my diluted acid, more dilute than the sodium hydroxide or more concentrated than the sodium hydroxide? What do you think? I should have diluted it 8.2 times, but that gets complicated, so I'm diluting it 10 times. Yep, so it'll be more dilute because I've diluted it 10 times instead of 8.2 times. So that means my sodium hydroxide solution now is more concentrated, so I am going to need less of it. So if I am going to be using 25 milliliters of acid, OK, because remember, in my conical flask is my acid and I'm putting in 25 milliliters and then I am putting my sodium hydroxide from the uh, burette and it's going in. So remember, this is always the tighter. And this down here is always the aliquot, just words we use. OK, but it does distinguish what's in the pipette and what's in the burette. I know because my sodium hydroxide is going to be more concentrated, I will need less of it uh, to, to neutralize the HCl. So in order to work out the volume of base, we're going to be saying it's the 25 milliliters, sorry, it's supposed to be a two, a 25 milliliters of acid, because that's what I used in my volumetric, sorry, in my conical flask, okay? But now I've got to do it by this dilution factor. So if I just move it up a little bit, I had was supposed to use 8.2, but I'm using 10. So I want it to be more concentrated. Um, so it's going to be, um, the V of the base, so it's going to be uh, 8.2 divided by 10, because a way of thinking of it is I want a smaller volume overall because my base is going to be more concentrated. So I put the smaller number at the top. So basically what you had over here, and that's why it was arranged like this, it's, it's easy to see. So we're supposed to have 8.2, but we diluted it by 10. So we're just going to go 8.2 divided by 10 multiplied by the 25 of the um, acid that we're going to be using. So I hope that makes sense. So if you do that, then you get an answer of uh, 25 times 8.2 equals divided by 10, which I should be able to do in my head. So I get 20.5. Um, milliliters of base. Now, ask yourself, is that what you expect? And yes, if this over here is more dilute, we would expect to use a greater volume of the acid to neutralize the amount of base. Because if you think of uh, the number of moles of the acid must equal the number of moles of the base, um, we can say that because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, the equation is HCl plus NOOH gives um, NaCl plus H2O. So it's a one to one ratio. So if you think of the formula of C is equal to N over V, and therefore N is equal to CV, can you see my C of the acid times my V of the acid must equal my concentration of the base, let's put these in here as acid, times the volume of the base. So if my base is more concentrated, I would expect my volume to be less than VA. Does that make sense? 
So all you have to do for your excellence is do this calculation over here. This all in purple is just the extra to explain the background of how you get it. But always ask yourself uh, when you've done a calculation, remember the three steps. Have I added a unit? Have I got the right significant figures? Is my answer reasonable? And we would expect my volume of my base to be less because the, the base is more concentrated than the acid um, now that I've diluted it. OK, right. So um, that's just an excellence criteria. If you don't do it, you know, um, then it's OK. You can still get achieved merit, but always try and aim for the highest possible. Now, um, when you get to the actual titration, we just give you lines like this. Uh, that's just simply what the moderators want. They expect you to be able to draw up the table. So you need to very quickly on your lines um, just sketch out, hey, I've got my rough. I've got my first trial, my second trial, my third trial, my fourth trial. What I do in my lab is um, you basically just simply practice until you've got three good results. So you write that all on paper. Uh, and then you, when you've got your three good results, you transfer everything over. So you would transfer over your rough results plus your three good ones. And you might want to do one extra one. And most students get three good results within five titrations. I've never had a student get, um, you know, need more than eight titrations to get three good results. OK, so that would be um, how you'd sort of lay it out. And now you put in oh, what you've also got to say is uh, your second burette reading. I'm not going to write out your first burette reading. And then your overall titer. Because remember, the titer is what you're adding from the burette. So remember, a burette has got numbers starting from zero going to 50. OK, here's the acid down at the bottom. OK, so um, because the numbers are increasing in size, it's easier to say 50 subtract zero than zero subtract 50. So that's why we do the second burette reading before we do the first one. So I've just quickly done an exemplar. So I'm going to just quickly look at it. Whoops, that is the. OK, all right. Um, I've just worked out some values. So say you were now in the lab and you've done it and you've tried it. And these were the results you got. So you got um, 24.3 as a second burette reading and you started from 3.1 so your rough was round about 21.2 your teacher will show you how to do a rough titration and how to do an accurate titration when you're in the lab so don't worry about that then um, because we know we're going to be using less than 25 I can use this 24.3 as the start of my next titration because I should be able to fit another titration in because it does go up to 50. So I now do an accurate titration and say I got to 44.8 before the color changed. And so if you do that quick maths, that gives me 20.5. I chose those numbers just to match what I, we had calculated uh, beforehand. Now, I can't make this 44.8 as my start of my next one because I'm going to run out of space. So I have to refill my burette and start again. Now, notice I do not start from zero. <clears throat> Please do not waste time trying to get 0, 0.00. That is very poor buretting technique. You're just wasting time. So I've just said we started at 1.7 milliliters and when I titrated, it was exactly 22.0 before the color changed, and that gives me a value of 20.3 milliliters as my titer. And 22, I can fit in another one, so that 22.0 is the start of my third accurate one. And I've been great because I managed to get it in. 
um, and I got 20.4 overall. Now, say I had carried on titrating, and I'm going to just be difficult now and choose, because this does actually happen, you get 0.9, and then you have 21.5, and now you've got a result of 20.6. Now, you need to, I mean, those are all pretty close, but you need to choose at least three results within 0 0.2 milliliters. So if you have a look at that, I can choose that one and that one and that one. And those are three all within 0 0.2 milliliters. I could also choose this one and this one and this one. OK, so those are the decisions you need to make. Um, we do compare your result to what the teacher gets, but there is a bit of leeway for that. You've got a, yours must be within half a milliliter of ours, and half a milliliter is actually a very big amount. So you should, unless there was something really weird with your equipment or something, you should get your results within ours. Um, the trick is you just have to keep on practicing until you get three results within 0, 0,2 milliliters. Um, and I know I always insist that you've got to do at least five titrations. So even if after your, even if your first three were great, like 20.5, 20.5, 20.5, I'll still make you do a fifth one, you know, the rough plus four others, because this is usually the first time you're titrating and you need to get practice and, and embed it. OK, so now that we've got that, now we do our normal thing just like we did in our first part. We calculate the average of the sodium hydroxide and we do the calculation. So here I'm going to just choose the ones in yellow. OK, um, well, actually, let me choose the ones in blue because that's a, a very similar to my calculated one. So I'm going to choose the ones in blue. So I'm going to say 20.5 plus uh, 20. 0.4 plus 20.6, all divided by three. And if you work that out, it comes to 20.5 milliliters, like I predicted. Uh, it probably won't, you know, the way you do it. Um, but yeah. OK, now remember, this is milliliters. And what is my unit? Uh, that I'm supposed to have for volume. Is it milliliters or is it something else? Oh, uh, while well, people are perhaps answering that, how would you start the next titration? Uh, okay, good, Francis, you um, converted to liters. And so, sorry, Star, I didn't see yours. Um, what you would just simply uh, do is you would refill your burette. Um, and I found the easiest is to simply take the whole burette stand down so it's just on the ground and then it's easier to pour because you always have to fill a burette below eye level. And you can imagine it's a long tube, so please do not stand up there and try and pour above your eyes. You are going to be wearing goggles, but you don't want to splash anything so it comes on your head and perhaps trickles down, you know, on your face and your eyes. So you always um, fill it up below eye level. And this is the easiest thing is just to take stand down that has a be put it on the floor, fill it up, you know, put it up again, then just let it run down to below the zero start and then take that reading and you carry on. But your teacher will show, will demonstrate all of that. So if you come to our uh, little lab in Wellington, you know, I'll be showing each step. I'll show a step, you do the step. I'll show a step, you do the step. So, um, you always sort of know what to do. Right, so we've got to convert to liters. And so the easiest way to convert to liters is just to simply say is 20.5 times 10 to the minus three liters. OK, because we're just dividing by a thousand. Now that we've got that, now we um, use the known concentration of sodium hydroxide to calculate um, our sodium hydroxide. And 
you would be in the lab given this value. Otherwise, if we're looking at what we had done previously in our um, uh, you know, this whole document, we did theoretically work it out earlier. Um, so we've got, let me just, it was 0 0.121 moles per litre. So you will be given this in the lab. Um, so we're just saying from previously, we worked out that the concentration, whoops, the concentration of my sodium hydroxide is equal to 0 0.121 moles per litre. So to work out my amount, now remember it's always good to think of what do you want to do? So this is C NaOH. This is N NaOH, okay? And this is V NaOH. So it's always good to highlight the bits in the question to see, you know, is it N, V, C, small m, big m, and so on. So you know what formula to use because you will be given the two formula of C is equal to N over V, as well as N is equal to small m over big m. And if you have a look at that, you are given C, you have just worked out V over there. So you are asked to calculate the amount, which is N. So now we just simply say C is equal to N over V. So N is equal to C times V. And again, if you're not sure about how to do this in algebra, if it's dividing on one side, you make it multiply on the other side. Or you can, if you want to use the formula triangle of C is equal to N over V. You won't be given it as a triangle, though you, you have to do that yourself. And now we just simply substitute. So we know it was 0 0.121 uh, mole per litre for the um, concentration, and the volume was 20.5 times 10 to the minus 3 litres. So I've deliberately done that so you can see that the litres cancel out the per litres, and you should get then an answer of uh, 0.121 times 20. I get 2.4805 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, but I'll keep all the figures in your calculator. Uh, just though, uh, you know, keep to about three significant figures times 10 to the minus 3 mole. Now remember, every time you do a calculation, make sure you've added your unit. And that's your mole of sodium hydroxide. Might be a good idea to write that down because sometimes students get muddled and muddled between what am I working with? And they might use the volume of the acid with the in the base equation or the other way around. That is actually a very common error. Now we say, okay, there's my equation, and notice my mole ratio. If there's no number in front, it's always a one. OK, so my mole ratio is one is to one. So if I have, so the mole ratio is one is to one, one HCl to one sodium hydroxide. So if N NOH was equal to 2.48 times 10 to the minus three, that means in HCl, is going to be exactly the same because one is the same as one. So 2.48 times 10 to the minus three is 2.48 times 10 to the minus three. I don't have to multiply or divide by two or anything like that because it's just one. OK, so always add the units so you know what you're working with. Now that I've got that, I also know my volume of HCl because I know I have got my VHCl over here. I've just worked out my NHCl over there. 
So when I come over here, uh, a notice I've said that in the 25 mil or 20 mil, some labs only have, so around New Zealand, some labs only have 20 mil pipettes and not 25. So just be aware of what pipettes you are using. Now, when we get over here, we need to calculate the concentration of the HCl. So uh, C is equal to N over V. We've worked out what N is, 2.48 times 10 to the minus 3, um, and divided by V, which is 25.0 milliliters times 10 to the minus 3. You can see that those 10 to the minus 3s cancel out. Um, so you're going to have that divided by 25 uh, exponential. 0 0.099. 0.099. But remember, now this is really important for excellence. If they tell you to give the significant figures, you must be exact. Have I given three significant figures? Not sure. I've only got two significant figures there. The zeros don't count. So I have to put in my other one. Now, if it's a zero, you need to put in a zero. In this case, it's not a zero, it's a two. But a lot of students think, oh, I can ignore a zero. Make sure you, because uh, calculators don't spit out zeros. If you did this in your calculator and, and there was a zero in the end, it wouldn't show in your calculator. So always make sure, have I got three significant figures? Now, in this case, it is actually a two and not a zero. So it's uh, 992 are my three significant figures. But remember what I said also, have I added a unit? Have I put significant figures in? Have I, um, is my answer reasonable? So you need to check all of those. If you miss out one of them, um, then you'll be wrong for excellence, the significant figures on the units. And of course, if your answer is not reasonable, well, then you don't even get a T for that part. OK, now I've got to uh, work out the original concentration. OK, so remember we diluted it 10 times. So the original one is 10 times more concentrated. will be um, HCl is will be 10 times 0 0.0992. And so can you see it's going to be 0 0.992 moles per liter. And again, three significant figures. Okay, any questions with that? That's fairly straightforward. So um, as I say, you don't do the actual dilution in the lab, so you need to look at the assessment task and see how many times it's diluted. Okay, but it will be given there. And now you've got to calculate it as a percentage because um, remember you are comparing it to the original, uh, what the given figure. So now you're saying, okay, uh, Get it as a percentage. Now remember, percentage just simply means mass in 100 milliliters. So what is my number of moles in one liter is going to be 0 0.992. So therefore, in uh, of the HCl in 100 milliliters, because remember this was one, if you like, I'll write this as 1,000 milliliters because that's the same as a liter. Okay, so can you see I'm back to one tenth again, 0 0.0992. I'm back to the number I had originally. That's the number of moles in 100 milliliters. So now we just use the formula of N is equal to small m over big M to get the mass. So I know this because we are given it. Remember, I said we we'll always give you molar masses. I know this so I can work out mass. 
So mass of HCl is equal to um, N times big M, which is uh, 0 0.0992 times uh, 36.5. And right. Uh, so that gives me 3.62%. Now remember, check the significant figures. Check the unit in this case is percent. And is it reasonable? Well, what you're going to now have to do, and I know I've gone slightly over time, is you... This is as far as you get in the lab, and then you go home and you finish it off by writing a report. And this report is, you need to explain what you did. Um, so, you, this modification is just, why is this not going? So this, you simply get, from the introduction task, you've got to find out whether the 3.2% muriatic acid is actually 3.2%. Okay. The description of your modified process. Here you've got to explain that the muriatic acid was actually too concentrated to titrate directly. And so therefore you had to work out how to dilute it. So it's all about the dilution. And so therefore, this is therefore the dilution, but it's also here you need to, in this part, look at all the things you did to make sure that your titration was accurate. So this is all about your error of parallax. Uh, it's all making sure you had clean uh, burettes, clean pipettes. It's all about um, uh, <clears throat> how you did the titration, you know, made sure that you um, started, you know, that you didn't go over the 50 mil, because then that would have an invalid thing. At least three results to show that your results were reliable, because um, you got three within 0.2 milliliters, and so on. So it's all about, uh, so in the 2013A, there's a lot about the errors in the titration that can happen. So all that sort of stuff needs to be included. Okay. Then this bit is you compare. Now, I deliberately in this assignment chose something where you can see it's not the same. We used muriatic acid that said it was 3.2%, but is that 3.2%? OK, hopefully you can see it's not 3.2, it's 3.62. Um, we had to use a standard percentage and so on. So you are quite welcome to say that you really did a good quality control and your technique for pipetting and berating was perfect because when you were pipetting, you made sure the bottom of the meniscus was just on the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so you're quite welcome to say that the manufacturers were incorrect; they were wrong. Okay, because we got 3.62, and I believe my results, and therefore the 3.2 percent is um, a bit low. But perhaps they made it lower than normal because if they quote that it's more concentrated than what it is, um, then, you know, if it's more concentrated, they may get fined because they might say, oh, you said it was three or four um, percent. Oh, you may want to switch your camera off. This is being recorded. Unless you don't mind being on. Okay, yep. So you're welcome for this part, then just to finish off um, and say that you were right and we were wrong. Now the conclusion, you must give a conclusion for an achieved. So you must basically say, 
my results were 3.62%, which was more than the given results of 3.2%. Uh, Hope, oh, Hope um, if you can just um, mute, mute your mic, please. Yep, so, um, you know, compared to the given, and say this means, and then you can just say um, the, the manufacturers underestimate or have given a lower concentration than that was there, if you believe your results. If you think you, 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 you made a real mess of the titration, you can believe them and say that uh, where you could have gone wrong. Okay. Any questions so uh, about this? Are you all happy to, to do the uh, titration now? Um, I know there are chemistry days happening. There's one at the end of June, I think, in Hamilton. Um, and there's, I think, one going in Christchurch. And then, of course, in the Wellington Lab, you can come at any time on a day that suits us. So any questions about that? Right. So as a final thing, you need to, before you come to the chemistry day, make sure you have completed the CHO2011A, the CHO, so it's BC, CHO2012A, the CHO2013A, okay, because this one's important for also going over the errors. And then ideally, you should also have finished CHO. 2112Y1, which is the first part of the assessment task. Okay, because depending on who your teacher is, if you've completed that and you've shown you can do calculations, you don't necessarily have to do all the calculations in the lab. But if you haven't done this, then you have to stay in the lab and do all the calculations. So it's good to have all those four things done. So then just on the lab day, you just do the CHO2113Y1, do the dilution um, ratio to make work out how much you should dilute it by, and then do the titration, and then you could probably go home after that and finish everything off at home. Otherwise, you have to stay and do the calculations, but this report, you finish off at home. Okay, went slightly longer, but that was the last lesson. So all the best, and um, it's yeah, it's, it's 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 a fun thing if you like maths and if you like fiddling in the lab. So I enjoy the uh, the this one. Uh, it is though quite a lot to get your head around though. Right. So if there are no questions, then. Um, all the best. Right.